Good evening, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us on 207. I'm Amanda Hill and I'm Rob Caldwell. Tonight is a bittersweet show for us. As you probably know, Amanda has taken on the job of anchoring our six o'clock newscast, and this is her last night on 207. So we're going to spend much of this half hour revisiting some memorable moments. You started on 207 when? It was 2017 September. It was, I know it was in the fall. 2017. All right. All right, that means we've got a lot of ground to cover, <laughs> so let's fire up the Wayback Machine. Good evening and welcome to 207. We have some big news tonight and we're going to get right to it. We are delighted to welcome our new permanent 207 co-anchor, Amanda Hill. Aw, it is an honor, truly an honor to be here with you. When uh, someone around here years, starts a new job, the promotion machine go goes Sunday. into action. <laughs> Go ahead and say the line. I've I been grew watching, up watching, you. watching you. I grew up watching you. I've been watching you all my life. <sighs> On your mark, get set. Oh, wait, I can't see. Thanks for playing, everybody. See you tonight on 207. This is typical. <laughs> that was a lot of fun when we started doing those. <laughs> Not that we were or still are competitive. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> what has always been at the heart of 207, though, is pretty simple. Telling interesting stories about the people of Maine. Amanda has done more compelling stories and interviews than we can possibly share with you in a half hour. But we wanted to take one last look at pieces of some of her best work. The ladies who sit in Lisa's chair. She always has some cute stories to tell. <laughs> are not just fans of her work. <laughs> they appreciate her. I love you. I love you too. Whether they come once a week or once every few months. How often do you yeah. have to Diane? Not as often as She's I should. There's a bond, which means an awful lot in a place like this. The Cedars, a retirement community and nursing home. Everybody gets a little older every day. When I came in here, I didn't know anything. Uh -huh. <laughs> Katie Freilinger is one of the many volunteers at the Cedars. And it feels very nice. That's good. Many of her days here are spent helping Lisa in the salon, talking with the clients and offering a hand massage. A lot of them don't have a lot of visitors and they don't have a lot of uh, contact, kind of stretch their little muscles and things like that. They feel good. In an old chicken barn, with the smooth sounds of a few old friends practicing their blues, Andy Swift restores very old trucks. I've always had an interest in fire engines. Andy thinks that interest began with his first truck, a pedal engine. Then I had a hot dog wagon. It was a fire engine that I converted into a hot dog wagon. I was selling hot dogs out of the back of it at Cook's Corner, you know, in Brunswick. So how old were you? 17, 18. But it wasn't until Andy actually became a firefighter working in Valdez, Alaska, that he did his first restoration. When his wife, Kathy, mentioned wanting to move back to Maine, life and a new career started moving east. On a chilly night, things are heating up inside the State Street Church. You want to come to a contra dance probably with a change of t-shirt. Uh, so during the break, you'd probably change your t-shirt. You might get a little sweaty, yeah. <laughs> and circle left, go, circle left. The instruction starts at seven. Looking good. But through the course of the night, this eager crowd grows. There's only been one night where we've had less than 50 people. <laughs> Let's go. Dude, would you chill your biscuit? One look at this crew out on the ice and you'd think they've been best friends for years. They call him Big Pike Mike. <laughs> The truth is, one year ago, <laughs> they were all strangers with one thing in common. Like before I joined the Army and when I first got out, I had a lot of good friends. And it's dwindled down to where I, I have maybe, outside of veterans, I have maybe two friends that are good friends. And I don't even really talk to them anymore. Might be a fish there. It's harder to That's communicate that with way. my regular Shoot. friends that never served. <sighs> Oh. 
It's not often you'll find a group of people this excited to begin a workout class. Then again, it's not often a workout class involves cuddling. What's the name of that pose, Amanda? <laughs> this is Puppy Yoga at the Animal Refuge League of Greater Portland. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. It happens once or twice a month, and as you'd expect... It's very little yoga uh, and a lot of puppy playtime. <laughs> Nearly 40 years into Parkinson's disease, Brian Hall took up cycling. Well, I was a big tennis player and a golfer. And I can't golf or play tennis anymore. I want to be outside with my friends, so I got into mountain biking. And mountain biking, if you're doing it, I mean aggressively, most people fall off, right? So it's a place where I, I'm very comfortable there. You know, when you fall, everyone falls. Brian included, which is why he wanted us to include this. I think it's perfect because that's what the books call. I'm not afraid to fall, right? Give right back up and keep going. I didn't expect to get this emotional already. <laughs> I actually, I, I meant to bring tissues. I forgot. <laughs> that's okay. I think um, I think every one of those stories, I was like, oh, I loved this story. Oh, I loved this story. You said that under your breath during the, uh, the fire engine restoration one. You said, I love this story. It's a great legacy. I loved all of those. And I, I, funny, I keep in touch with a lot of people from some of those stories because we make such deeper connections on this show because we spend, you know, all day on a story so you really really get to understand some of the people you're talking with and meeting up with and ah uh, yeah good stuff you should be proud of every one of those <laughs> Aaron and Adrian let's not run the bump let's take a quick break and be back with more of 207 in a moment